Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode we are going to play through the January transfer window, hopefully reshaping our squad for the rest of the season to maintain our Premier League status. But before we go any further, there is a few fixtures to uh, review since the last time we met and we've actually unlocked our goal scoring boots. The first game was a 5-2 away win against Crystal Palace McBurney, Ender Stevens, Lee Smooth-Set, Luke Freeman, George Baldock all getting the goals. We did concede two late goals but we were absolutely dominant in this match and incredibly clinical as well and it's come really nice to see because we weren't really scoring much before this. Another game and another Five goals this time. Ender Stevens, Mousset, McBurney, Basham and a Declan Rice own goal. At home against West Ham winning 5-3. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And back-to-back -back wins again in the Premier League. Seeing us rise out of the relegation zone and into the mid-table spots. And in the last game before January was at home against Manchester United. Where unfortunately we could not continue our, goal sc uh, our winning run. We ended up getting beat 3-1 here. Ashley Young with a double and Paul Pogba with one. John Fleck getting a late penalty to give us a consolation goal. And the Premier League table looks something like this. After that, we are sitting 14th position, six points clear from Crystal Palace in 18th. As you can see, against West Ham and Palace, both teams in and around where we were. So to get wins against them was absolutely massive. Obviously, the defeat against Manchester United is disappointing, but it is to be expected. So we are at the 1st of January, the transfer window has opened, so we can now start looking to reshape our squad just a little bit. I'll just remind you, we do only have £9.5 million with £97,000 available in the wages. I will actually try and speak to the board and see if they will give us some more money. So if we go and make board request, we'll see. We've got really, really good balance in terms of finances and stuff, and the clubs always make money every month, so he might be able to give us it. We twist your judgment, I thought, oh, so increased by 14 million. Looks like we're going to go for higher, but I'm satisfied with that suggestion. So what does that actually mean in terms of overall? So we've now actually got 23 million pounds available in the wage budget. What if, do you think they'll actually give us some? Uh, all right, we'll look to increase the percentage transfer revenue as well, just to give us that extra bit of flexibility. So now we've got a decent bit of money. 24 million pounds is definitely something we can work with. And I've actually already made an offer for our first potential signing. It might not happen purely down to wages. It's Tilo Kira. He's placed for Paris Saint-Germain. He's an absolutely fantastic 23-year-old German centre-back. He's exactly the sort of player that we should be signing. And he's available for 5.25 million. The only issue is that £86,000 per week wages. That is something completely out of the scope of Sheffield United. As you can see here, the highest earner at the club is only on 35,000. So unless he can significantly reduce his demands or we can maybe maybe 50, 60, I, but I really do want him. I really do. I think he, he'll, he'll come in and he will be definitely our best uh, centre-back. We've came in for a load of new staff members as well. When I first start a new club, particularly in the middle of the season, I don't like making too many major changes in terms of staffing. But now we're in the January, we look to f um, hire in the free slots and in the summer I look to have a, uh, a bigger overhaul of everybody. So we've, we've been managing what for like seven games or so so far and the club vision screen is now changing. So as you can see they are very pleased with our current status in terms of our end of season objective of staying in the Premier League which is absolutely fantastic. But in, in terms of the club culture we're actually performing a little bit disappointingly playing possession football and making the most of set pieces the board are disappointed so I am going to make some changes in terms of our tactic to try and make sure I'm matching the club culture because although the results are going well I don't know how significant um, the board would take me not following the club culture. So in terms of how this episode is going to work I'm going to play all of these games during the January transfer period trying to make signings trying to make sales and we'll just review the fixtures as they come in. We won't be live coming any but um, if there's nothing to talk about I'll see you at the end of the Newcastle game. So after reviewing the squad and seeing where the holes might be, these are the sort of players that I'm looking to move on. Leon Clark, he's 34 years old. He's, his uh, contract runs at the end of the season, so it's unlikely we're going to be able to sell him. But he's not required at the club, so I will be looking to get rid of him. David McGoldrick, he's been an absolute pain ever since I've came to the club, requesting new deals every every two minutes, upsetting the squad with uh, some of his comments and things. So I will be looking to move him on as well. 
Michael Verips is our third choice goalkeeper. Might be a little bit naive to look to sell this guy, but if we are desperate, well, we'll just have to deal with it. I'm happy to move him on on 10k a week as well. Stuart Dallas, um, I've been getting comments from Marco Bielsa, the Leeds manager, saying I haven't been playing him enough. And that's fair enough. I'm happy to terminate his contract. We don't play wingers. Um, and the only place he was actually getting game time was right wing back. But we've already got two. So he's no longer required. And Mo Besic, he's on £30,000 a week. He's one of the highest earners at the club. And he's not actually in me starting eleven. He's a really, really good player. But I will be looking to terminate his loan as well. And free up that 30 k a week. So our 5.5 million offer for Kerr has been accepted. But it looks like he is going to want between 93 and 125 k in the wages. Let's see if he'll accept an important play. He will, which might mean he will potentially not ask for as much. He's wanting 110 straight off the bat. Our maximum is 85. Would I pay that for him? I probably would. You know, he's actually he's incredibly well rounded. He's a really good player. So anything to actually get him in the door, I might just go for it. Well, after some negotiations, we have managed to come to an agreement. It's an absolutely huge deal. It is the 85k a week. It is a huge amount of bonuses and stuff. But I think he's the sort of player who would not only come in and be an absolutely fantastic player for us straight away. He's the sort of player who can grow with the club as well as we move towards being a more established Premier League side. It is opening a can of worms in terms of the rest of the squad. But I think it is a chance I'm willing to take. And I'm going to go for it. It does mean that... Our wage budget is now going to be heavily depleted, but we can transfer little bits out of the transfer budget to um, increase our wage budget available. So it's a bit of a risk. It is a bit of a risk, but I think he's going to come in and be absolutely fantastic. And there we have it. Our, probably our biggest signing of the January transfer window is complete. Kerr joins the club from Paris Saint-Germain. It's a small deal in terms of transfer, but it's a big deal in terms of wages. And I'm really happy to get him into the club. So because of the way we structured the transfer deal, we still actually have £20 million remaining and £30,000 remaining in the wage budget after we've cancelled our loans. I will look to adjust that slightly just so we've got some room to manoeuvre. So now you look at it more like £17 million and 80 k per, uh, per week wages available. In terms of what I want now, striker. Number one, I will blow the load on a really, really top class striker. I haven't found him yet, but once I find him, I will let you know. So we've just finished our FA Cup game against Newcastle and unfortunately fell to a 5-4 defeat. We've definitely unlocked some scoring tactic. Uh, just defensively, it's not very great. We did play a quite rotated side. Kerr had his debut, didn't have the greatest debut, but it was a weakened side anyway. Not going out there for the FA Cup's not that big of a deal. I do think they expected me to get to at least the next round, so the board might be a little bit disappointed. But... Um, it's not the end of the world. Scoring four goals away from home is definitely a positive, but uh, getting beat. We'll we'll take a look, see what they were saying about the FA Cup again. Fourth round, we've failed it. It's going to be a black mark against our name. We'll have to wait and see how that affects things throughout the rest of the season. So we've just played Bournemouth in the Premier League and we've fell to a very, very late 2-1 defeat. We actually took the lead, the lead through Luke Freeman and I thought it was going to be another three points and potentially a clean sheet but uh, Harry Wilson in the 84th and then they've got the winner in the 91st minute it's a cruel way to have lost the game but it was a decent enough performance from us the difficult thing about that defeat in particular is that our third defeat on the bounce now we've got Liverpool Man City and Arsenal remaining in the January period so you can imagine we might be pretty far down the Premier League table once those games are concluded we're still five points clear from Norwich in 18th though, so hopefully it won't be too bad. And if we can manage to keep out of that relegation zone at the end of January, I think that will be a good bit of work by us. I'm still looking for signings. Still got the 17 million and the 65k available in the wages. A couple of new players have signed uh, new deals at the club. I've basically made that happen just to keep squad harmony intact. In terms of our dynamics, you can see the dressing room atmosphere is top notch. Uh, Manjiro support is good. Team cohesion could be doing a little bit better, but that'll come with time. Uh, nobody's coming in for David McGoldrick, so he's not getting his move. But uh, we'll keep offering him out and maybe something might happen a bit further in the window. So I'm still on the hunt for a striker. And the one that I really wanted, unfortunately, <laughs> it's got a hip injury and he's now out for two months. But this was the sort of signing I was looking at making. Technically, he's a little bit weak. 
particularly in the finishing and first touch areas. But mentally, he's really well-rounded and physically, he's exactly what I was wanting. A PC striker who can beat the back line and be able to be a goal scorer, basically. But he's out for two months. He was only 22 years old as well. He would have been available for probably around 12 million. Um, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen, not this time. The other option I had was Sebastian Driussi. It, it's all about getting Zenit down on the price, really. They wanted 28 million. That was the negotiation we ended up coming to, which was far too much for me. Even though I could probably afford the deal if I structured it correctly with installments. Um, I think that's a little bit too expensive. If we could have got around the near the £20 million mark, I think I might try and make that move. But I will have to continue on a bit because our last negotiation did break down. We've just played top of the league Liverpool and predictably got absolutely smashed. It was a bit of a domination by Liverpool. We did take the lead through Billy Sharp in the ninth minute, but quickly Jordan Henderson equalised. Van Dijk, Chamberlain and Salah gave Liverpool the 4-1 win. Disappointing. After that defeat, we are now only four points clear from the relegation zone. Haven't played a game more than many sides in and around us. Um, Newcastle are the side in 18th, so it's getting tight. We've still got two games to go. Um, Man uh, who else is there? Uh, there's Arsenal and Man City next. <laughs> at least we're at home against Man City, but we're away against Arsenal. If we get a point from either of these games, I'd be absolutely delighted. But it looks likely we'll have six defeats on the bounce, which it's not great. So my scouts have been busy on a short-term assignment to find me a striker. And if we can get him for a reasonable fee, I think we've found him. It's Anthony from Brazil. He's currently valued at 14 and a half. My scouts reckon it would require between 11 and a half and 28. And although his natural position is right wing, he is a natural at striker as well. In that advanced forward role, I think he could really, really do some damage. He's a four-star current, potential five-star player. Um... He's not injury prone or anything. It, it's literally just whether we can get him in with the sort of funds we've got remaining. So we have come to an agreement. It's £20 million, £7.5 million up front, £12.5 million over the coming three years. Well, three 12 monthly instalments. So hopefully we might be able to get him in and have our strike up issue sort of solved. I'm not sure how much that would leave us in terms of our budgets. But um, we'll have to wait and see. He does want a lot, a lot of money. And he does want a lot of things. Well, I don't want him to use the club as a stepping stone, if at all possible. We'll improve coaching team. That's not something I can do right now. I'll give you a play, big player eyes uh, language. Look, I, I hate all these things, honestly. Let's see how he responds to this. Well, look, what can we remo remove? Remove coaching team. And we'll deal with the rest. He's not willing to talk to me after them. I'll have to go back in. <laughs> The other option is Sebastian Driussi, which we've just agreed a deal for £23 million with Zenit. I think I would pay that amount of money for him. He's a four-star current player, five, four and a four-and-a-half-star potential for our squad. So that would mean he would come in and be our best striker by an absolute country mile. He does look decent. He hasn't got quite as much potential as um, Anthony does. But if Anthony's wanting that sort of money and them sort of promises that I couldn't quite give him, We'll give Driussi a go. Maybe he'll be a bit more reasonable than what he wants. Huh. The board are looking to cancel a deal. Right. Um, listen, I don't want to get sacked. I really don't. Let's start the board. Reconsider. Right, we're going to cancel the deal for Driussi. <laughs> My board doesn't want to do it. That's the first time I've ever seen that. So uh, that's a little bit of an interesting one. We're still looking for a striker. I'll keep an eye out. Probably just go back in for Anthony again, see if that can, see if we can push that deal through. It's just the wages and the promises that's an, the issue, really. Ah, another tough game. This time at home against Man City, we ended up falling one 0 It was a pretty even game, but Raheem Sterling gave them the lead in the 26th minute, and well, we just we just couldn't get back under it. Then you know, it's Man City. They're just too good. Right, I'm getting desperate. I went back in with Driussi, and we've agreed a 20 and a half million pound deal, which hopefully the board will accept this time and not yes they do but he wants even more wages jesus the nice thing is he doesn't want too many um promises or anything like that but he wants 150k a week we're 90 off of 66 this deal's not going through i can tell you now nope contract negotiations are over oh we might <laughs> we're struggling a little bit well that was a game and a half 
<laughs> How we've come out of this with a draw, I have no idea. Billy Sharp pulled us in front inside 20 minutes. Oliver Norwood then decided to get himself sent off on 41st, so I thought, this is probably the end of this match. Game is against us. But McBurney puts us 2 0 up just before half time. Then Nicholas Pepier scores a penalty. Kieran Tini equalises for Arsenal. And then they've just bombarded us for the last half an hour of this game. But we've somehow managed to keep them out. And we've actually got a point away from home against Arsenal with 10 men, which is absolutely fantastic. In terms of the Premier League table, that sees us lying. Probably to, at the end of January now, I don't think we've, we have any more games. But we're not in the relegation zone. We're four points clear from Palace in 18th. Of course, Newcastle have some games in hand, so they can't close the gap there. But um, I'm quite happy with that. You know, we've ended our run of five, six straight defeats. Five straight defeats, sorry. Could have almost been six there with our Arsenal game. But thankfully, our fixture congestion now sort of eases up a little bit and we'll start to play teams in and around us a little bit more. There is still 10 days to go in the... Um, in the January transfer period so there is still opportunities for us to make some moves again it just depends on the right player and maybe Anthony actually relinquishing some of his promises but I can't say that happening but we'll keep an eye out all right so we're getting towards the end of the January transfer window and based on what we've found so far and the offers that we've made it looks unlikely that we're actually going to be able to make the signings we want in terms of the striker role that causes a little bit of an issue. Do I think we'll be able to stay up with the players we've currently got? I'm not too sure whether they'll be able to do enough to be able to see us through the rest of the season. It might be a bit hit or miss. We've still got £17 million to spend, but I don't want to waste it. Um, signing somebody who's the wrong side of 30, you know, just to try and keep us in the Premier League for one more season. I think I might gamble and hopefully be able to keep us up with just the players that we've currently got. The Anthony deal with the Brazilian club they've suddenly boosted their offer now they're wanting 28 million more than the 20 million they agreed to before so I'm I'm not going to go back in for him Driussi's out and the rest of the players that we've sort of found around the right age and in the right sort of quality they're absolutely massive money either in wages or transfer so I think I'm going to dip out now and we'll just last and see how long we can go with the players we've got um, I'll play through it at the end of the January transfer window and if anything changes I will let you know. Right, right, this might be a little bit desperate, right? But I've agreed a deal with Bournemouth for Dominic Solanke for £20 million. Now the benefits of Dominic Solanke, he's English. That's the main benefit. He is better than any striker we've currently got in the books. Um, he's incredibly well-rounded physically. Mentally, he's okay, technically the same. But he can play in that advanced forward role very, very comfortably. He's highly rated by me scouts. Three and a half star current, four and a half star potential. So although he's not potentially as long term as Anthony or Driussi would be, the fact that he's English will be very, very much appreciated. He wants to come in as a star player and he won't accept anything less. That's fine. So we're going to suggest a £56,000 a week offer, which he has rejected. Um, he wants the sell on fee percentage, which I cannot accept. Oh, he's not going to accept this either, is he? He's not. He's going to reject it. Another failed contract negotiation. It's getting towards the wire now, and I think... Oh, I really wanted somebody. Really did. And there's the transfer window over. No further moves in or out for us. So the only signing coming in was, of course, Thomas uh, Tilo Kera from PSG. I think he'd be a fantastic sign and he does look like a great centre half. He hasn't started particularly well, but we'll give him game time and hopefully he will continue to improve. We still have the amount of money, 17 million left. So if we manage to stay in the Premier League, we're going to have quite a healthy budget going into the next season and we're going to make some major, major changes during the summer. But it's all about this season and next episode we will be facing Newcastle and Burnley. Hopefully being able to pick up some wins along the way to further solidify our position outside of the relegation zone. But anyway, a little bit of a disappointing January. But if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you have enjoyed my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.